Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode I want to get the four satellites into orbit around the moon and reflecting on it I think I think it should be easier than I might have thought. The, uh, of course there's a lot of things that I don't know about orbits <laughs> and especially around the moon because I certainly haven't put a constellation around the moon myself and I I don't know I don't think human beings have put a satellite constellation around the moon yet I'm not sure but uh, uh, anyway uh, it seems to me first of all that we need to drop this this orbit more than it is uh, this orbit with uh, 30,000 kilometer apoapsis is too high there's no way that the little uh, antennae with their range of 10,000 are going to be able to communicate if they're if you can imagine a circular orbit like this there's no way that they'll be able to communicate and even if we kept it like this and just boosted the periapsis up a little bit there's no way they'll be able to communicate so we absolutely need to lower it let's see now so as I understand it the burn off from the hydrogen on this tank gives us a little bit of a boost in the direction that we are currently pointing in when we come out of time warp and this is from Nathan Kell and Honey Fox is the one who actually created the uh, Engine Igniter mod who uh, developed this little thing to simulate the fuel burnoff being used to settle the propellant and so that's why if we point in the direction of our node and after time warp we will see that we are hopefully stable let's see okay um yeah so let's time warp let's do that thing it's a little bit harder when you're going pro yeah, retrograde though when you're pointing retrograde because a lot of the acceleration that you might have had is prograde okay still very unstable so not enough of boost there but we, it's not like we had that much liquid hydrogen anyway well we still need to time warp a little bit have to wait until we get a connection okay where are we is it that the KSC is on the opposite side? Ah. Uh, See, now, if KSC and Pratchett Station are on the other side, we have a problem. That's another complication this whole thing. So, basically, for 12 hours of an Earth day, we'll be good. And then for the other 12 hours, we'll only be able... Uh, the moon system, even once I get set up, will only be able to communicate with Earth for half time. And that's uh, the half that Pratchett Station happens to be passing on the lunar side of Earth. So I guess we'll just have to go around. So much for this. Let me, in fact, dump that one. So yeah, I have uh, the equation for orbital period in front of me, just in case. Uh, I would have remembered the the gravitational parameter and the semi-major axis being cubed. Well, I probably wouldn't have remembered was the 2 pi. <laughs> Uh, I always, I always lose the, lose the constants somewhere along the line. Okay, so now we're connecting through Pratchett Station. I can tell because it's through the Clark Forsetti. Okay, and then we're not. Okay, well, this could be interesting. Ah, there we are. Okay, well, we'll go with this. Now, let me slide... Oh, boy. Okay, uh, just point retrograde, would you? And not in two days, but how about in three minutes? Okay. Flight computer, honestly. 
Six seconds, what a delay. So, is it a good policy to just burn this stage out? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it has all that much fuel. But we could end up crashing into the planet. There's no easy way for me to measure the mass of the fuel in this right now, actually. Wonder if uh, Mechjeb give me Delta V stats like this. Ah, okay. That that helps. 2,441. Yeah, I think that's a little bit too much. If that's really what it's got left, that's a lot. Um. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is. Oh, so the equation for orbital period I have. Well, it, it'd still work for. Uh, weird orbit like this. Hold on. Um, let's say we set apoapsis at a healthy but not... well that's pretty close. I wish I could pause the game at this point. Oh yes I can. So, how about a 12 hour period for the ultimate orbit. If we have a 12 hour period, that's a whopping 43,200 seconds. And if I do the math for the moon, I get a semi-major axis of 6,151 kilometers for a 12 hour period. Seems like I'm missing a factor of two somehow. This is a five hour orbit right now. But I was expecting it to be a tw oh, hmm. So, what I figure now is that, well yeah, it's a five hour orbit here, which is a little bit tight. So what I actually want to do is get a six hour orbit right now. Or, well, I don't want to try and boost up from here. So we'll get them into slightly high on their apoapsis side, and then they'll uh, they'll uh, circularize. Hopefully that'll work out. Okay. Okay, so something like this. So I'm now going to tell Flight Computer to try this out. Oh, uh, wait. I have to make sure that our fuel is settled. Oh, no. That's not what I wanted to do. Come on. Unstable. Okay. Well, that's going to continue to put our crimp in our plans. Oh, right. Seven second, eight second delay now. How long is 8 seconds? Oh. Right, because I pressed it twice. Uh, okay. Still might be too tight in orbit here, but we'll, we'll find out. Okay, uh, right, so... Let me... Well, I guess there's nothing for it. We're gonna waste some fuel though. Again. Gotta try... I'm holding down the H key. And I guess I'll try an 8 second burst. So once I start seeing the RCS fire, I'll let go. Okay, I'm not feeling it here. I'm now pushing H again.
Wow. Okay. <sighs> this is not working out. How much fuel do we have left? About less than half a tank there. About half a tank in the rest. No, I'm gonna try to spin method. A little bit hard with an eight second delay, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take flight computer off of node. Gotta tell it to go pro grade. <laughs> At its leisure. And then, of course, once it's getting close to prograde, I'll have it turn retrograde, and hopefully it'll go on the other side instead of this side. I don't know. Well, now it's very stable. Like I said, there's a benefit to being pointing prograde. It likes it. It likes prograde. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, I think it's gonna try and reverse direction rather than go all the way around. I really wish it wouldn't, but... Okay, I think I should just light it now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Once it hits stable, I'll probably have to light it. Oh, how can I light it? Uh, oh, darn. Uh, okay, burn. Come on, flight computer. While it's still stable. Okay, Whew. all right. Now I have to hope my periapsis doesn't dip too far. Got to prepare a zero zero just to make sure. All right, uh, oral period five hours fifty four minutes. Good. It's good. All right. So now I'm going to try releasing them at Apoapsis and see what happens. Uh, okay, <laughs> took a little bit of a time for remote tech to correct itself on that particular connection. Now we don't have a connection here, so maybe we should uh, wait until the next time around, because clearly all my assets are on the opposite side right now. With a 6 hour orbit this time, that's easier to do. Okay, so I think it's time to release our first one, and then boost it. Okay, um... No, just point prograde actually, flight computer, uh, after your one second delay. First things first, we need to uh, ensure communication on each of them before we release them. 
Let me make sure. Yeah, that one is extended. All right, so those two are nice and deployed. It's pointing in the right direction. I think we're all good. Not toggle torque. Where is the decoupler? Right. And that might take a second. Yes. Okay, we still seem to be controlling from there. Uh oh. Uh. What? I can't. Oh no, this is the. Wait. Okay, uh, my camera is a little bit off, that's why, because I was messing around with stuff. Now we're controlling this one. Alright, I was controlling the stack separator before. Okay, so that is good. Now let's plot our maneuver. And let's see if my calculations were anywhere near correct. No, they weren't. Um, okay. So much for having the equation in front of me. I wonder what I did wrong. Yeah. Okay. So we know that the base orbit was six hours. Let's go for a 12 hour orbit, whatever that happens to be. It's not quite circular, but that's fine. I think. <laughs> Still trying to figure this out. Um, yeah. A little bit disturbed that for some reason me and my trusty calculator couldn't figure this out together, but definitely got it wrong here. Okay. We'll go with this. It's not a bad orbit. Nope, not bad at all. Uh, the little puppy does have enough delta V, so that's that's nice. Oh, I didn't get this one out. Seems like we're not pointing in the right direction, right? Control from here. Orient prograde. How about just orient to the maneuver node? Uh, wait, the remote tech computer seems to be controlling, or is that one just spinning out of control? Yeah, I think the remote tech computer is still controlling that one. Hmm. Well, uh, let me give the command to ignite these engines. Right. Now, what can I do? Um, let me not care about flight computer. Let's, as much as I hate mixing things up like this and this trouble ahead possibly, let's tell this to point to the maneuver node. Well, that was quick. Does Smart ASS not obey the signal delay? I don't know. Now, I am going to do a test burn. That was immediate. Why was that immediate at all? I'm confused. Okay, uh, well, if that's immediate, that's immediate. Let's get to the maneuver node. Don't have to worry about signal delay on this one. You know what though, I could probably get into a nice, even more circular orbit than this, if I wanted to. I could just uh, set the apoapsis to where it ought to be, and then boost back. Is there any point to that though? Probably not. I'm 
this is a tighter orbit than is strictly necessary, I could put them higher. But I'll leave that for later. They seem to have enough fuel, so perhaps later on I'll boost them to higher orbits if I think that's wise. Okay, and an RCS. Now RCS had a little bit of delay. Not much though, no. Okay. Oh, there was a little bit of delay. Okay. Maybe I'm just, uh, because of the 8 second delay on the other side here, for some reason, uh, because we were relaying through Clark Forsetti. I'm a little bit dis disoriented. Okay. So, that's one done. Now here's the trick. Because of our inconsistent communication, can I stagger them properly? After all, if I spend one more round, I don't know. <laughs> uh, will we still be in communication? Probably. Uh, but then what about the next few? We'll see. Okay, let's uh, get back to the ComSat pack. Now, that's an interesting thing. We've got a 6 hour, 12 hour orbit. That's not very good. Technically speaking, because they'll be on opposite sides, they won't be able to talk to each other. Really, we should have done a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 ratio, but I might have something to fix that. We'll see. Let's just get the first two up first. Okay, so let's go around once and add apoapsis, burn this one out. Well, since it seemed to work before, let's just have Mac Jeb take care of this. I think, uh, and here we have a delay. For some reason, Remote Tech wasn't handling both craft properly. Okay, now I'm going to set this antenna to Kennedy Space Center, activate. Actually, having them all connect to Kennedy Space Center might not be the best thing in the best idea. Maybe I should have. Well, I think I know what I'll do. Might be wrong, but we'll see. Okay. All right. This is a satellite. Good. Now. Oh, shoot, what am I doing? Thinking about something else. I was thinking about if I could do something... Okay, so here's what I was thinking about when I went too far on the burn. What I was thinking of was uh, patching up the gap between the two because they're on opposite sides of the planet by putting the other two in inclined orbits. Now, I was always planning to do something like that, but hadn't really thought it through and that's what I was mulling over in the last episode too was having two satellites on opposite sides but then patching them up by two other satellites in the inclined orbits uh, possibly even polar orbits how much would it take to get into a polar orbit around the moon when you don't start in a particularly advantageous position for it I don't know boy these these RCS ports not very efficient are they Wow. Okay, um, actually... I think something must be getting in the way of them. Because that, that's just not right. Uh, let's use these. Okay, now maybe the RCS will be able to help a little bit. Yeah, I mean, look how much Delta V. I mean, there's no way that's right at all. Oh well. 
I mean, what kind of ISP are they getting? It's like a tenth of what the these little one kilonewton thrusters are getting, which is that's not right. Oh well, so we're very short on uh, on fuel in this one, but we've got to its orbital period of 12 hours. That doesn't strike me as a good chance for what I was planning on doing. Let's go back to the probe stack. So, I mean, I, let, let's just for curiosity's sake plot it. Let's say we did want to go into a polar orbit. Something more like that. That's not too bad, actually. Will it help with communication if I put two in this orbit? No. Well, I mean, there'll still be a blackout. There'll still be a blackout. When the two will be on opposite sides. Yeah. Yeah, in, in fact... It, it wouldn't be as bad, but there would still be a point where they would be on opposite sides for this duration here. See, from the where the orbit starts to hit the plant, uh, the moon, and where it exits. For that period in time, there won't be any communication between the four satellites. Okay, so I won't do that. Shame. That's an interesting idea. What I will do is... No, I don't need to do that. Uh, add, add a maneuver. I'm going to increase this orbit to a 9-hour orbit. Just preparing it. Okay, so let's go around once and then burn into this orbit. I think that's fair. Or maybe we'll lose communication by then. Well, that's not the kind of communication that'll help, no. But we can always hope that we'll connect through... Can we connect through Pratchett Station right now? No, the Clark facility is on the opposite side. Okay, well, we've got a lot of things to fix here. So these other two I'm going to connect through the European Space Agency. Just to mix things up a bit. Okay, so we could have uh, set this at the 9 hour orbit in the first place, but it'll be approximately 9 hours. I don't think we got hit quite right with uh, flight computer in charge. Flight computer, the maneuver node is there. Yes? Okay, well, whatever. Alright, let's see if it can do this, and I'm going to have to remember to get that in. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, fuel stability. Oh. Very stable. Okay. Go. Uh, where are you going? Hey. Uh, prograde. Prograde. Jeez. People wonder why I don't know about flight computer. Uh, what? Why? 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 <sighs> oh, fudge. This is all wrong. Um, okay, so maybe the first one was right, or is everything booked up? Okay, I hate flight computer. I really, really hate flight computer. Okay, once more with feeling, please.
still says very stable. Let's hope it stays that way. Okay. Okay, numbers changed on me. Fuel flow went unstable? No. Um, we have fuel. Oh, we don't have any liquid fuel and oxidizer. Ha. Ah, that's convenient. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Alright. Not exactly what I want, but I think I can deal with this. Yeah, let's just go right. Uh, yeah, let's just go around twice. And that should put us right. And it should also be the case that we'll maintain connection on the second time around. This is awkward. Yeah, I guess guess burning from here will be fine. Let's see. I don't want to do it with this though. Want to be 90 degree angles with the other two. So this is good, but I want to release the satellite. Okay, next one. And as promised... So you might be wondering why I don't connect them to G-Stats, and that would be the logical thing to do, and the reason for that is I'm worried that A, the G-Stats don't have enough dishes, and B, the G-Stats will just disintegrate on me when I turn to them. Now, there are theories about why that happened with the G-STAT 2, but if I can avoid testing theories out, I would be happy for that. So we're going to try and do this without do it using the G-STATs. I might need to just uh, have uh, new G-STATs, but I, I'm not eager to go there just yet. Okay, so, yes, and we can ignite these, good, prograde me, okay, well that's not going to be good if we, uh, hmm, well, yeah, let's plot the thing first. Okay, I think I think we're good. Mm. But we're still gonna smash right into it, aren't we? Well, if we've got the extra delta V, I can use that to perhaps. Yeah, let's go this way. Right. Now, gingerly. Okay, a 12 hour orbit, but at a 90 degree angle from the other two. Possibly with enough delta V to change its inclination as well, which would be interesting. But for now, this should be fine, and that leaves the last one. And right now I'm going to switch this one from Kennedy Space Center to the other Space Center. And I don't need to have this stage anymore. So I'm going to ditch it. I hope I'm not too close to the third stage and it's gonna like hit me or something. Well, it looks pretty free right now. So it'll take a few orbits for us to get into the right position. We're going to catch up to this one first, 
and then we have to pass it and then get into the next position. So here we're catching up. We now pass it. We're a little bit ahead this time. And here we wait until we're at 90, 90 degree with the other two and then we'll be in the right place. Hoping that we'll keep communication through that. Now this end is going to be a little bit low. But I don't think that's an issue actually. I think all we have to do is get that 12 hour, 12 hour orbit. Well, it's about that much. I'm going to be looking at this orbital period anyway. Okay, uh, prograde is good enough. Got to keep a lookout for our debris and make sure that we don't smash into anything, but the skies look pretty clear right now. Alright, mm, staging. Okay, pretty good. Uh, let's wait a few minutes. And yeah, let's do it here. Okay, and well, there we have it. We've set four satellites in 90 degree gaps around the moon. This one is a little bit off in terms of where it is, but uh, correct in terms of orbital period. So it should maintain its relationship to the others. Uh, plus or minus a second. Now, that does not mean that we don't have gaps in our communication. Uh, though it doesn't seem to show that when... <laughs> uh, okay, anyway. Um, Sometimes remote tech is a little bit slow at this. Okay, I'm just taking a look at how the communication layout works. Okay, but it's a little bit hard around the moon, I guess. Let's. Can we get? No doesn't want me to see anything more than this. Alright, well, yeah, so basically the gaps are when the two space centers are on the opposite side of Earth from the Moon, and Pratchett Station is also on the opposite side. In that case, there won't be communication with the Moon. So that's still a worry, but we've certainly got a better uh, situation than we had previously. And so I think we're ready to try for another moon landing. So we're going to land with our our little uh, Vern, who is the Vern lander. We're going to land on the moon and try and get samples from the surface uh, using uh, not the not the surface samples, but the these samples, the ones that come with the probe and also perhaps some goo experiments with that. All right, so we'll try that next time and see if it works out. Uh, moon landing's not necessarily the easiest thing in the first place. I think I need to up the amount of delta V in the lander itself. So we'll do those tweaks in the next episode. Sorry for this episode just being a matter of positioning satellites, but at least we've got our situation in order for a more exciting episode next time with a little bit of suspense. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.